It's Jonathan. How's it going? Today we're going to talk about VIX term structure. One of my favorite topics because one of our top indicators is built all on VIX term structure. So I can start this lesson off with the most impressive back test data that I've ever seen. So let's go to the computer and let me walk you through the back tested data and then we'll go through the VIX term structure and we'll show some examples of other markets they use a similar type of curve as the fixed term structure. Let's go to the screen. So as I said, the easiest way to show this example is walking you through backtested data. VIX backtesting insanity. We're going to look at the VIX. Back test trade size is going to be one because we're looking at S&P futures. Here are the rules. Once we put a trade on, when we get a thumbs up that we're going to get into a trade, we want to make 100 S&P points. Do we want to do a stop? The first time we run this, let's do it with no stop because I could put a day in here and then the study will be once we get in the trade, we're looking for 100 points. But if we see 30 days, we want to cover the position. So to start, let me show you a one lot S&P futures. We're trying to make 100 points. Okay. Apply. Okay. Show study. Okay. Apply. Okay. Here we go. I want data going back 20 years, as much data as they'll give me. Any one of these, right click, show report. Now here's why this is one of my favorite strategies. Because when we back test this puppy, we go back 2013 to present, max trade PL 6,000, Total orders 12, total PL 63,500. Here is the cool thing. As we back test this with the parameters that we put in, 100% results. Jonathan, why don't we use a stop? Why don't we use a stop? Same thing, VIX back testing insanity. Let's use a stop. Let's say after 21 days, we're going to get out of our position. So you better make 100 points within 21 days or we gone. Okay, apply, okay. Again, hit any one of these to show the report. Show report, going back to the same date. Let's look at the results. We're doing a little more trading this time because we said after 21 days, we out. We weren't just holding the position. So this time our trade PL, we have one loser. So out of the nine round trips, we have one loser. The one loser is for 3,687. But overall, the total PL on a one lot of SP futures, 59,712. Better than a sharp stick in the eye, right? So what's the deal with this tool? It's the VIX trading system. The VIX trading system looks at term structure of the VIX, VIX term structure. And in front of you, we have a bunch of different lines, but these different lines are the different durations of the VIX. Let me explain. So let's focus here, guys. This is VIX futures, and this is the VIX term structure of the futures. If we look at the contract month, this is going to be one month, two months, three months, four months, five months. So if we do it like this, with the months on the bottom, we go one all the way to 10. In a normal environment, guys, we're going to see the short-term VIX cheaper 
than the longer term VIX. Because the really short term VIX, we know what's in front of us, right? If there's nine days or, or the front month VIX, there's a nine day VIX. If there's no news, nothing really coming, no unemployment, we're not in a pandemic, there's not gonna be a lot of volatility. But if there is a pandemic and the uncertainty is all in that front month, that's when you're gonna see this kind of behavior where the short-term VIX is gonna be super, super high while the longer-term VIX is gonna be lower. It might not be super low, but it's certainly gonna be lower. So now if we just turn and focus on the prices, it's pretty flat. And what I mean by pretty flat is the difference between one and 10. The difference between those is, was that $1.93? So it's really not that much, but you can see there's like a bump where the VIX gets a little bit higher five months out, six months out, seven months out, but the market's pricing in volatility to go lower after that. And that's just the shape of the VIX term structure today. These change. Right now, if I was going to build a curve, I guess it kind of looks a little bumpy in the middle, right? A little bumpy in the middle and then it goes back down where it's almost kind of like flat like that so that changes here's something cool we're talking about VIX term structure we're talking about comparing the VIX of different time frame what other instruments can we trade just like we're looking at the VIX like this oil WTI, that's West Texas, versus Brent. Brent is found in the North Sea. As most of us know, oil front month went negative. There's such little demand. So right now, professional traders, rather than just speculating on whether the price of oil is going to go up or down, instead, they're trading the oil curve. So when somebody says, wow, I saw that oil is trading negative 10 or it's trading zero, it's not really, right? So the price right now, that's really not where oil is going to end up. We can see that oil, at least the market is pricing in, definitely more of like a $35 value once things settle in from what's going on right now. So traders need to follow this. Follow the curve. Follow the relationships. You can do it in VIX term structure. You can follow the oil curve. My favorite trade is following the yield curve. So here we have the Treasury Futures yield curve. Stop here, guys. If you're getting good information, if you're getting value from this, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Introduce yourself. Ask whatever questions you have. I'm making this to be interactive. I'm making this to teach. Hopefully, you're getting benefit from it. And if you're not, leave a feedback on how I could help. Treasury Futures yield curve. Just like VIX term structure, there's a curve, right? Just like oil, there's a curve. And during different economic times, these curves, you can see I got a new pen that I'm very excited to play with, act in different ways. So right now, the treasury yield curve, it looks kind of kinky, right? It's not like a natural curve. There's this big, big like kink in it right here. It looks just kind of weird and unnatural. That's because the environment we're in right now is weird and it's unnatural. Look at the yields. They're nothing. The only reason it looks all kinky like this is because the difference between the two year and the 30 year are so close together, right? The difference is 1.4 minus 0.2. 1.2 difference between a government bond that's two years versus a government bond that's 30 years. That's not something that happens all the time. If there was no virus, if there was no deficit, these two years would be about three or 4% and 
and the back end, the 30 year would be like seven, eight, nine percent in an upward sloping, really strong yield curve. Right now, this yield curve is telling us we got some problems. Well, we know we have some problems. We're going to leave it at that, guys. Hopefully that went into explaining what VIX term structure is. It's nothing to be intimidated about, but it's not just the VIX. Once you learn whether it's the VIX curve, whether it's the interest rate curve, whether it's the oil curve, many others, learn one, and then that information translates to all of them. My name is Jonathan Rosen. I'm the owner of Masters in Trading.